Hey there warriors, in this video we are going to implement StanStack query inside the Next.js application and we are going to talk about what is actually StanStack query and about all the benefits you get when you are using it. StanStack query is a rebranded name for React query and it is a server state management tool. So it is not like Redux or Zastan which are client state management libraries, it's used specifically to fetch synchronize and cache server data. How it works under the hood is that we have our 10 stack data state which is being fetched from the server and we are making queries from our client side to get that data from our 10 stack data state and we can also call mutations send our form data to create some users, blogs, or whatever it is. Having this state available inside of our application makes the app much faster, because if we need to display some users inside of our client, we don't have to fetch the server each time that we want that data. We have that data already available here inside of the 10 stack data state. So this is the main power of 10 stack, to have this data available for us to use it throughout the whole application. Now let's quickly implement it. So here I have a fresh copy of Next.js and we are going to the documentation and then installation. Here I'm going to copy the pmpm add 10 stack react query command and I'm going to paste it inside of my terminal in my 10 stack example project. And when that one is installed, we are ready to go with the next command and that one is definitely recommended and that's the 10 stack eslint plugin query useful if you are using typescript and i hope you are using it and now we can already start using it so i'm going to the quick start for react here we have some code for reference but it is not exactly like this inside of Next.js application. Thing is that we have to deal with server and client components and if we put this query client provider inside of our layout, it's just not going to work because this client provider is a client component. So we need to create our own provider inside the Next.js. So I'm going to my code and here I'm going to create a new components directory and inside the components I usually have the providers folder because I'm usually using shedcn so here I have components UI and here I put my providers and new file I'm going to call it 10 stack provider.tsx so 10 stack provider is going to be a client component and here we are going to create that 10 stack data state and cursor started all right so here we are creating an instance of new query client and that's exactly the same like here inside the 10 stack documentation but what we are missing here is to actually create our state so we are going to create just like this we are going to use use state from react and create our query client state. Now we can delete this query client from here and we are sending our query client state to the query client provider, which is also brought by 10 stack react query. And the only thing left is to create a new interface and put the props to get just children, which is type react.react .react node and we are sending those children inside here, wrapping it up with query client provider. And now our 10 stack provider is ready for us to put it inside our layout. So I'm opening the layout file and here inside of our body, I'm going to put like this, our 10 stack provider, which I'm going to import from our components slash providers directory. And now we can already start calling our queries and mutations. So I'm quickly going to create a new directory called server and inside a new file users.ts. And here we're going to export one function that is going to be called get users. And we are fetching those users from this dummy data website. So we are going to use this to 
get our query inside our page. So I'm going to our page here. I'm going to delete everything by default from Next.js and let's just put here test so we can see how it looks. And if we go here to the localhost 3000, we can see that we get our test. So now we should here get our query with bunch of users. And that one is going to be a piece of cake. So we are going here inside of our documentation and here we can see the way how the queries are being called. So we are creating our query and we're using this use query. It's kind of like a hook from 10 stack and we are putting our query key and our function. In our case, it's get users. So inside of our component, we are creating a query here. I'm going to import use query from 10 stack and it's not get to do's it's get users from our server slash users. And instead of this test here, I'm going to go through our query data and map through each user. And I'm going to display just like this. So we are displaying a div where the key is user ID and we are going to display the names of our users. And one last thing before we test it out, this use query being a hook, we need to put here use client inside of our page. And now we can test it out. And now if we go to our browser and here to our local host, we can see that we are getting all the users from our server side. So this data now is cached inside of our application and the performance of the app is extremely better. If we go from one page to another, we would get our state that we currently have and we would not fetch from the server once again and wait for it two or three seconds or whatever it is, it can be 20 seconds. But this data is now inside of our application and we have it ready to be served wherever inside of our app. And there are many more things that you can use inside the 10 stack. For example, here, if we put that if query is loading, we can return just loading. So we have all that logic available. If we refresh, you can see we see loading before we have the actual data. And there are many small things around 10 stack that are really easy to work with. And we have here the error we can just handle that easily like this. So we don't have any ESLint errors. And one last thing is the mutation. That one is also easy. So inside of our users, I'm going to create a new create user method. And we are just going to console log the user data from here. And this one can be just same like on our page here. I'm just going to copy paste it. It doesn't matter here, this interface. And then from our page, we can just go to the documentation again for the reference. So here we see the mutation. We are just going to copy paste it and put it here below the query. And we are going to import the use mutation here. We are going to import our create user from server slash users. And for this, we are invalidating the queries. So in case we are creating a new user, we should display it automatically here inside of our list. Now, this is not really the creation, but you would see it if we had a database. So we just need here our query client, same like in our provider and I'm calling it here. So now we are calling for our mutation and here, I don't know why this one disappeared. And here now we can create a button. So I'm going to create it here, button where we are going to call for our mutation to create a new user. So you can see we are doing mutation.mutate and then we are sending the ID and name. So if we test it out now, we go to our browser and here we have create user button we are just going to open here our console and when we click create here, we are getting the ID and name console logged. Now 
This one is not good because it should be on the server and not on the client side. So in case we have our database open, we would see maybe something like some API key or something. So the solution for this is here inside the server that we use our use server prefix. Now this one is going to work for mutations because use server is used for mutations and it is not used for queries. And we are going to separate this get users and put it somewhere inside, let's say here, for example, new folder, we can call it client. And then here we are going to create a new file users.ts and put here the get users function. So now inside of our page, create user is going to be called from the server users and get users is going to be called from, from the client. So now if we go here, we are getting now again, all the users. And if we click create user, we are not getting our console log inside of our console. But if we open our terminal here, let me just bring it on the screen we are getting it inside of our server side. And that's where we covered everything. I mean, almost everything, all the major things from 10 stack. Hope you guys enjoyed in this one. You have this code inside the public GitHub repository. You can find it in the description below. And if you want more content like this, join the horde, subscribe.